pulled this way and it sort of carries it. This macromolecule, or I don't know how styrofoam, I, I haven't looked at the chemistry, but you have these molecules that are all bound together. Right. To when your electrons fully deploy to that side of what is there any type of particle in the experience that fills that possibly charged side of it that creates no. any reasonable kinetics? I, I, I wouldn't think so. Okay. I mean, there might be some bizarre quantum thing going on. Well, I was thinking it could be just a, in the realm of particle physics, so like your subatomic particles, if they redistribute and that any, any type of like redistribution from the atmosphere or surrounding environment, if that creates any type of thrust or, or reasonable effect on its ability to uh, move or, or any effect on its momentum. Um, I, my thinking right now is no, it would not. Right, because there's just such a short distance once it implodes, it can't have that much force on the body as a whole. I, I wouldn't think. Because the electrons. Yeah, I mean, because they're, they're so tiny. I mean, it's. And the force on an individual electron, or even the electrons in an atom, would be incredibly tiny. Right. I'm just thinking on the scale, we, we have such a large force, and so with the electron being pulled, it's going to create some micro vacuum or nano vacuum. In, a, in some way, whether that's electro vacuum or uh, atmospheric. Vacuum. Yeah, the, the trouble is that when you talk, when you say vacuum, generally uh, you're talking about absence of molecules, but we're at that atomic level. Right. Uh, so vacuum really doesn't make a lot of sense. So the, the subatomic particles would actually behave in relation to the electrons, so they would feel simultaneously. Oh, as electrons go this way, the proton goes the other way? Or in the course of whatever, I can't for sure. Um, All right, the proton is being repelled, but it's got much larger mass. The electrons are really light, so they would be pulled over to this side. Because I just recently watched a video where you have that beer bottle uh, part and the magnitude of force, you're actually creating a vacuum in the bottom of the beer bottle. And so as the liquid creates that vacuum and redistributes its own contact, that they actually break the bottom of the beer bottle when you're doing the break. Yeah. So it's, it's something that's interesting in this aspect of how the electronic shift would. I, I still don't think it's going to have, it would have anywhere near, it yeah, wouldn't have an effect like that. Right. Um, I guess bottom line is I, I'm not aware of it if, yeah. if it does. Yeah. Thank you. There's also. Now we can light this up also with that. Um, uh, I've done the video on that one as well as the story of my shocking myself. And if you're ever going to use the light bulb on this thing, uh, don't put your the metal prongs next to your hand. Just words of wisdom. I made the mistake so that you don't have to. Then again, there was that one student who liked getting shocked. So. <coughs> Is that it for the draft generator? Anything else I want to do? Oh, the string. years ago there was an instructor looking at the Leyden jar that's the, the thing with the <coughs> basically it looks like an electroscope without the leaves in it on the about the middle of the counter there and he asked a question about it he was not sure that it was charged and I so I reached for it and no it was charged and then the story of dealing with the electrical outlet in the house turning to my wife and said did you turn the power off yes I turned the power off not on that app once you had it. I've done that one more. Yeah. It should feel good to be alive. All right, so I have the string attached on here. What should happen when I turn it on? 
Okay? Why? We're just reading electrons towards one side, and therefore we're forming a um, it may be the intent of what you're saying, but the, the wording, you say distribute electrons, it's, it's actually drawing the electrons, it's pulling them off the string. Right, so we have two positive plus one charges. Yep. <laughs> first. Sounds like that belt's about to go. All right, so when I put the, the wand near it, it was pulled towards the wand. Why? Opposite subtraction. What are the opposites? Uh, the electron's on the surface of the ball, and then the positive uh, charge on the string. Where are the electrons? All right, so I brought it near. You said electrons on the surface of the ball? <coughs> are attracting the positively charged string. I think. Well, uh, one other thing going on. Hmm? Oh, I thought you were about to say something. Uh, yeah, or um, would be the protons on that end of the string pulling the electrons uh, towards one side of the uh, wand. Yeah, so because it's positively charged and this is a conductor, we don't have the dipole thing going, uh, at least not at the atomic level, but I guess the whole ball becomes a dipole. The electrons are being drawn over here, and so it should attract. Now when it touches, what's going to happen? All right, so we should transfer some neutralizing it, and it, ideally it will repel. Let's find out if that happens. String might be too big. All right, so contracting. And the time is hard to see. Contract it and then it starts away. And we have the classic hair demonstration right here of hand on the vanderbrack generator. Now I have done this successfully. Uh, does anyone want to actually do their? I'm out. Um, I got hit by a little voltage right there. I'm okay. <laughs> Did anybody want to do it? I kind of want to, but I'm kind of scared to. <laughs> yeah, your hair might your hair might be too short. All right. Where's Roberto when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's okay. Thanks. All right. So I know what you're thinking now. Oh, that's great, but where's the math? Well, let's do some math. I'm right. We're done at. 8.50, not 7. Actually, let's stretch your legs, take a five minute break. Come back, we'll do math. I'll pump you up. So, did you put your hand on it? Are you just thinking it'd be shocking? No, I mean, when you turn it on? Yeah. If your hand's on it, when it turns on, then you're part of it. And so the, the electron flow will be. It, you know, you might feel your hair bristle a little bit, but the electron flow primarily goes through your hand, so you're not going to get that 
all of the electrons shooting out at one particular spot, which is what's causing the pain. So what's the danger of just holding your hand on? There's not. Oh, uh, the, I kind of wanted to do it. Yeah, I, was, I, thought, I thought it was like the danger is if you turn it on and then put your hand on it, then that yeah, that will hurt. Is, if I were to move, I got a long separate, hair, it's kind of like matted down. I think Marisol's hair probably work better, but it's on. If you're not hair product, messes it up. No, no. It I needs don't have to be. Anything in my hair either. Oh, when we come back from break, if you're either of you willing to try it. We also had one class where we had a chain where, you know, held hands and, and then somebody touched the board. Zachary, as class went on, I thought, oh, that's what you sat up here, right? Yes, I used to. Yeah. I walked in there when our efficiencies and I forced the back. So, you couldn't see them on the ghost side anymore. Yeah. On this side. That's right. Zachary's taking the ghost. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can do that. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the ghost, uh, the most bizarre results I ever I seem to get in this lab are back there, and um, I mean, just things that defy anything I would expect. And so, generally, blame it on a ghost of some sort. It's haunted. Is there any Curse. power delivery over here? As far as like, is there any power delivery over here, or maybe a generator or air conditioning? Oh, I don't think so. I, I haven't come up with an explanation about why. But it could be like the Bermuda Triangle where you begin to go, wait a second, two planes have gone down there, and then you just look for it. <laughs> when in fact, the percentage of accidents in the Bermuda Triangle is pretty much the same anywhere. Yeah. It is a good story though. I've always wanted to go to the island. I just never, I never had time. I really ended up in Miami again. It was on my list, it just didn't happen. It's what, 50 Florida. miles? How far is it from Florida? Oh, it was uh, like 13 hours. Oh, okay. And so, and then Key West was gonna be another two hours, and I said no. Um, so yeah, something like that. It's, I wanna say eight, no, 600 <laughs> miles to Orlando, 500, no, 500 miles from Miami, 400 miles to Orlando. Oh, okay. Might be something more than that. I, I was just driving. I, it took me. I, I looked at the time the whole time. I knew it was 13 hours. And I was like, all right, here we go. 13 hours from where to where? Uh, here to Miami. Okay. South Miami. And then really, it's Homestead. So it's 13 hours to Homestead, 12 and a half to Miami, 11 to West Palm. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. At, at one point, I, I found out that Atlanta was about the halfway point between Detroit and Miami. Yeah, I was surprised that I could get to Colorado before I could get home. Like, I just didn't understand how, like, when you look at the map, that's not intuitive. That it's closer to Tallahassee than it is to us, as far as Denver. But somehow it was easier, or somehow it's shorter distance from Tallahassee, Florida, to Denver, Colorado, than it is to North Carolina. And I, do not, I don't understand what it is right now. And that seems bizarre. Yeah, I'm tired of some of the I'm going to move the electronics away. Uh, Marisol or Austin Heath. Marisol, did you want to? All right. Yeah, put your hand on it. Um, and so, based on experience, I had also. Wait, are you just turn it off? Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. I'll make sure it's that everything's hurt. okay before I turn it on. Uh, if you take your hand, once it gets going and you take your hand off of it, you should be fine because you basically will be the same potential as it has. There's, there's no, it's going to reach an equilibrium. Okay. And so, if you take your hand off during it, uh, you're still at equilibrium unless you discharge on something, in which case. You're suddenly not. So if you take your hand off and back into the board, you might get hurt. 
I said, don't touch anything. So leave your hand on it. Wait till I turn it off. That's the best way of doing it. If you happen, your hand slips while in the middle of it, you should be okay. But if your hand comes off of it, just back away. Don't touch the thing on your way out. Now? Yeah, before I turn it on. All right. At some point, I'm going to ask you to sort of shake your head. Uh, this will not be as dynamic as if you've been to Discovery Place or any of the science museums. Uh, it will not be that dynamic. Well, go ahead. All right. Shake your heads up. You can start to see it's thicker more. Not longer. So you can start to see it sort of frizz up a little bit. Again, not particularly spectacular. Yeah, that's not long to hold. Yeah, this side, this side of it is a little bit. You can see, and so it sort of puffed up. It's giving volume to her hair. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to take your hand off of it. Not a problem. Uh, and okay. we're good. Yeah, did you want to <laughs> discharge? Okay, we're good. Right. Did, did you did do anything? No, it's not anything. Anyone else want to try it now that we've had uh, one guinea pig? I don't, is, is my hair like, since it's like flat? It's short as it I'm trying to, oh. Uh, I don't have any product, it's just flat because I don't have my hair. I should be able to take my hair. You want to find out? You know, so Austin wanted to try too, it was like. Mm -hmm. right, so sort of get a sense of what his hair looks like now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's working even better. <laughs> 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 Alright, let's see what he's looking like. Let's see Bill. Uh, and Austin, I'm sorry. That's fine. Like, just flip it up that tanger real quick. <laughs> you know, inevitably. The problem is that the it, the thing is old enough that the rollers are are not really cylinders anymore. They they sort of slope, and so that's causing part of the problem. <coughs> and replacing the belts not an issue as long as I can find the belts. I know I had them at home at one point. All right. Um, it's some plastic. All right, so we talked about the fact that there are forces acting between these charges, and so, of course, there's a mass formula to go along with that. So if I have two charges, Q1 and Q2, the force on one from two, so this is on one from two, It looks a whole lot like the gravitational force formula. I'll sort of put that one up if I have two masses, mass one and mass two, the force. So this is electric force, or a little E down there. This is gravitational force. A distinct difference here, besides M's and G's, 
versus Q's and K's, is the negative sign here. Because gravitational force is always attractive. And so the minus sign means it's in the negative R hat, R2 hat direction. Uh, reminder that if I have a mass here, mass two, this is a radial unit vector. <clears throat> And so R2 hat is pointing away. So just a unit vector pointing away from whatever the, the central object is. In this case, mass 2 is the central object. And so the force on mass 1 is always towards mass 2 when you're dealing with gravitational force. And so it's always in the negative R2 hat direction because R2 hat goes away, negative goes towards. Whereas over here, we don't need the negative sign because charges can be negative. Matter of fact, it's attractive when one of these is negative and one is positive, and so the negative will come straight out of that. So even though charge is a scalar, negative does have meaning here. And just basic plug and chug, oh, the K. Sometimes I will write K sub C, sometimes I will write K sub E. Uh, this is known as Coulomb's constant. Also known as the electrostatic constant. The two significant figures. 9 times 10 to the 9th. We have SI units, and that would be Newton's meter squared or Coulomb squared. Which does bring in the fact that the SI unit of charge is the Coulomb. Named after like you've done it all before. <clears throat> uh, I think in another significant figure at 8.99. So we'll take a charge here. Oh, uh, one other thing in terms of notation. I have a little Q here. Uh, sometimes I'll write big Q, and there's sort of a 99% rule about when you use which letter. They both stand for charge, and so I, I usually don't get too hung up over, oh, I can't believe you used a little Q when you should have used the big Q. Uh, I'm not hung up over it, but textbooks tend to use little Q for a single charge, a uh, single, I guess, charged particle. And big Q for a collection of particles. You saw the similar thing in momentum, a lowercase p for momentum is the momentum of one object, and a capital P is the is the sum of momentums. And that's particles, not sparkles. So let's stick in a five micro coulomb charge here and a negative three micro coulomb charge there. Let's put them a half meter apart. Now I'm already using a five, so let's make it 0.4 meters apart. What is the force on the five micro coulomb charge? Because of the three, or negative three micro coulomb charge. Nine times ten to the ninth. That'd be Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times five times ten to the negative sixth coulombs times negative three <coughs> times ten to the negative sixth coulombs divided by 0.4 meters squared. I guess that's the arc root. 
two times ten to the negative seven, six to the micro? Yes. And these are realistic numbers. The the ball is somewhere in the I think the micro coulomb range. And sometimes we'll do coulomb charges just for the convenience of the math, but a coulomb of charge is rather large. And the answer is Somewhere around the same thing. Anybody have an answer? Negative 0.84. 0.84? Okay. We're missing some stuff here. If actually this were a test problem, that would be minus 6. Micro Nope. Mm -hmm. That'd be minus 5. That was the final answer. Oh, it's just cool on units. Newton. All right, so what are the units? Newton. Yeah, Newton. It's a force. The, this coulomb and that coulomb cancel out with the coulomb squared there. The meters squared cancels out with the meters squared there if you're left with Newtons. And also, you're finding a force. So if the formula has any credence at all, you better be getting Newtons if we're dealing with SI units. Uh, one more thing. We have a negative sign here, but I haven't really set up a coordinate system uh, unless we're going to go with the default and just write our three hat. You could have also, since it is a one-dimensional problem, you could have just made it said, oh, that way it's positive, and then left that off. But that's just that's the simplest problem. Let's make it more difficult. Because that's what you want, and I'm doing this for you. Questions on this? So I've got a five micro coulomb charge here. This is at x is equal to negative negative point four meters, and then at x equals zero meters. I have a negative 3 micro coulomb charge. And then over here at x is equal to 0.4 meters, I have a 5 micro coulomb charge. If I plug into the formula here, the force is, we just did it, 0.84. Zero. But isn't the force over here going to be negative 0.84 newtons also? Oh, the question, what's the force on the middle charge? 
So you were saying that the answer was zero, but uh, but aren't you? Isn't it negative point eight four newtons? Does that cancel out with each other? They're both negative. How do they cancel out? Because they're on different coordinate systems. Are they on different coordinate systems? <laughs> oh, they're at equilibrium. Would they be at equilibrium so it wouldn't affect that, that middle charge? No. E aren't they in equilibrium? Did I miss? So like it wouldn't affect that, that charge in the middle at x equals zero. All right, so you're going back to your your original thought of zero newtons on the middle one? Yeah. All right. The reason I bring this problem up is I've asked this on a test before, and unfortunately too many people put down negative 0.168 or negative 1.68. It is zero. But this does come into how do we reconcile the different coordinate system here? And it is, in a sense, a different coordinate system, even though they have both of the same. Because the radial unit vector is a little bit different than i, j, k hat. Because on this side, r2 hat is in that is going to the left. On this side, it is going to the right. So even though these are both radial unit vectors with the same center, in the context of this problem, they have different meanings. So your choices when doing problems with this, and it comes up far more in this course than in the first semester course, you can either think through the directions. I know this is going to be pulled to the right. I know that's going to be pulled to the left. It's the same magnitude of charge. Ignore the minus sign for the magnitude. It's an equilibrium. Total force is zero. Or take strict adherence to the math. Please don't mix and match. I'll let you know what you're doing. So what you'd have to do is get a common system, preferably I had or J had or they did the direct effects positive. And so the total force on the three from the I'm just going to call it left. So the force on the three micro coulomb charge, negative three micro coulomb charge, is the force on the three from the left plus the force on the three from the right. Switching into this coordinate system here, then this becomes negative 0.84 newtons plus 0.84 newtons. But you've got to be careful of the coordinate system and what